Hi, and welcome to Everybody's Bloomington. I'm your host, City Communications Director Danny Lopez, and this is the monthly program where we discuss those community issues that are important to you. Cities across the country have felt the crunch of the recession and have struggled to grow and even stabilize their local economies in the past year. Rather than investing in themselves, many communities have had to scale back not only on programs and services, but more importantly, on their efforts to support local businesses. In the end, having a strong economy during challenging economic times requires an investment in niche industries. It requires a bolstering of locally grown businesses whose missions are in line with those of the greater community. And it requires supporting local business leaders who understand the important roles they play, who help shape community character through the work that they do, and who use their resources to create jobs and spark local economic growth. In Bloomington, we have done just that. We have spoken a great deal on this show about our creative economy and our quality of life. But one business sector that we haven't discussed very much, one that is truly on the cusp is technology. So with us today to talk about Bloomington's flourishing up and coming tech sector are two of the individuals who wear so many hats in our business community, Ron Walker, president of the Bloomington Economic Development Corporation, and Ari Vidali, CEO of Envisage Technologies and board member for the Bloomington Technology Partnership. So welcome to you both. Thanks for taking time out of your very, very busy schedules to, uh, to chat with us a little bit today. This, has, this is really for us an interesting topic because we, like I said, we've talked on this show about arts as ec economic development, uh, We've talked about quality of life as economic development, but one thing we haven't really gotten into is, uh, is hard economic development strategies for solidifying and stabilizing the, the community. So this is a great opportunity to do just that, and I know that from looking around at other communities, uh, particularly in challenging times economically, um, you know, it's difficult to find those niche industries that you can invest in as a city or as a community uh, to, to really help the, the local economy, economy flourish. I think we found that in, in the local tech sector, and both of you are, are just play very critical roles in helping to make that a reality. So before we, we really delve into it, uh, starting with you, Ron, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do, what your, your role is at the BEDC, and what the BEDC does in the community. Oh, sure. Thanks, and thanks for, thanks for sure. having us here today. Uh, the BDC is a not-for-profit corporation, uh, been around for over 20 years now, started as a traditional economic development group, which meant that uh, people would come together, pool resources, go after specific companies, try to recruit you know, new capital investment, new employment opportunities into a particular area, right. benefit the economy, um, bolster taxes, um, hopefully raise the prosperity level for people across the board. That's the traditional economic development model. Uh, several years ago, uh, the BEDC, as well as some other groups across the country, started looking at that a little more closely and saying that may not be the best, or the, the best model, or at least shouldn't be where we put all of our, all of our, our don't put all your eggs in that basket, right. if you will. Um, and uh, partially, what led to that is a look at existing companies, uh, companies either that are you know already present in your community, already employing people. Most job growth, uh, around 80% comes from companies already in your community. And typically you'll find that those companies have, le have leaders that are engaged in your community already. So there's a greater benefit. Um, they're, they're already integrated in. Um, they may be involved in volunteer activities. They may have uh, children in the schools, so on and so forth. So we began to focus more of our resources on uh, existing employers. Uh, helping them grow, making sure they have the tools that they need to grow here, making sure we understand what's challenging them to growth. Uh, are they at risk of uh, re reducing employment or leaving the community altogether? Um, that's what led uh, really to a couple of our initiatives, one of which you mentioned, which is the, the Bloomington Technology Partnership. Right, and Ari, this, I mean, that's a, that's a great transition because we, I, I personally, and I know, um, you know, everyone associated with the show is thrilled to have you on because we haven't yet had somebody from the private sector who has had the experience of building a business here and can tell us a little bit about what the challenges were, what strategies you implemented. Tell us a little bit about Envisage. We've had several announcements with you guys over the course, I guess dating back to, I don't know, last August or so. Tell us a little bit about about what you guys do and, and the role that you play in the community. Sure, Danny. Well, thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, a few things. I, I assume that as a software company, we qualify as tech. But really, all kidding aside, uh, this community is uh, uniquely suited, I think, as a uh, 
breeding ground for tech companies. And I think during the show we're going to talk a little bit about that. In 1995, I was uh, still working for IU. And I, mm -hmm. IU is a, an incredible place that fosters a lot of research and development in terms of uh, informatics, in terms of computer science. Right around 1995, uh, there were some opportunities for me to leave. And this is what fostered the beginning of a sort of an entrepreneurial career in high tech. Uh, five businesses later, we are now uh, here on the square as Envisage Technologies. We're a software development company focused on uh, automating the training uh, process for federal, state, and local law enforcement as well as military clients. So from that perspective, um, this recent uh, economic uh, surge in activity in terms of federal funding has been very good to us and uh, we continue to grow the business. What are some of the things that are important in terms of fostering that kind of development? Number one, uh, helping entrepreneurs. And I think that the BEDC is doing an incredible job at helping entrepreneurs uh, launch and set roots down in the community. Uh, and we can talk a little bit about the Bloomington Technology Partnership, which is a little bit modeled after uh, what was being done in biotech. Mm -hmm. Uh, secondly, uh, we need to recruit into Bloomington a sort of a critical mass of businesses in this area. Uh, you need to have anchor tenants here in Bloomington that can create synergies with the small startups. Right. And so we think that's very important. Uh, I remember talking to uh, Bill Haberly, who is a very well-known figure in this community and who started the entre entrepreneurship program at IU. And one of the things that Bill uh, told me as a young entrepreneur, he said, the best thing that you can do as, uh, to foster economic development is to create a successful business. Sure. And so it's that mentality that we need to have going forward and the support for the young entrepreneurs. And it's interesting because you hit on two things specifically that are, uh, that are essential to, and, and really are central to everybody's Bloomington and kind of what this whole initiative is all about. And, and one is the support for the entrepreneur and, and the other is, you know, finding those businesses that are taking root here and have become part of the community, that are entrenched in the community. And that's something that, uh, you know, that, that cannot be overstated. We, we've got to continue to search out companies like yours that have roots here in the community and, uh, and continue to help them grow. Now, we've talked on this show a lot about the Beeline Trail, Everybody's Bloomington. We've talked about, uh, we had Mike McAfee here from the Convention and Visitors Bureau. So we've talked a lot about, um, particularly about quality of life, natural amenities, uh, infrastructure improvements that we've made to make this community a place where, Ari, if you were to go out and recruit somebody to come here to work for you uh, in, a, in a very specialized position or find somebody in the university to come and work for you or in the community, you'd be able to say, this is what we have to offer. Here's the community that you're going to live in. You've got exceptional parks. You've got uh, new amenities like the Bee Line and the Twin Lakes Recreation Center. Uh, you've got an engaged populace. You've got a city hall that works with the business. So all of these things we've talked about in detail. Ron, maybe talk to us a little bit about what what are the things that the city needs to continue to do, uh, obviously investing in, in businesses that are here, but to, to make your job easier so that you can continue to go out and, and not only uh, foster what's here already, but find new people to come here and start up businesses and things of that nature. 